so hello there and welcome back to another Night of the Movies podcast. And in these podcasts I talk all things movies and TV and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast I'm reviewing the new Greta Gerwig film, Barbie. But before I do that, I should say what I say at the start of every podcast I do, and that is, if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, hello there to my viewers, but you prefer to listen to your podcasts, well, you can with this one, at Night of the Movies on Spotify, and if you are already listening on Spotify, hello there to podcast listeners, then you can also check this podcast out visually on my YouTube channel and Night of the Movies on that platform too. Likewise, wherever you may be watching or listening to the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the podcast, of course, and leave some feedback on things to improve on in future podcasts because there's always things to improve on and feedback, as ever, is much appreciated. Also, I should say here, and people who follow my channel recently will have a good guess as to what I'm about to say. It is still the ongoing saga of Hay Fever. Yes, I spoke about my problems with Hay Fever many times on this channel and those problems are still continuing. Although my Hay Fever isn't too bad today, I have been sniffling throughout the day so far. I'm currently calling it in the afternoon and I was sniffling quite a lot this morning, so if I'm sniffling for the podcast, I do apologise. If I sound a bit bummed up in this podcast, I do apologise too. And I should also say that hay fever makes you feel under the weather and I'm feeling a tad bit under the weather today so yeah blame hay fever if this podcast isn't the best but other than that this should be a great and fun podcast to listen to and or watch so let's get into it Barbie. This is one of the most anticipated movies of this year. It's coming from Greta Gerwig, who, if you don't know already, previously directed Lady Bird and the 2019 version of Little Women. Both of those films I really like. I mean, I... I should say I'd never read the Little Woman book and I'd never seen any of the previous versions of Little Women, but I really enjoyed her version of that film. I really liked it. I watched it the first time a couple of days ago and I found it really moving. And Lady Bird was a very unique coming of age film, which, yeah, I really liked too. And so I was looking forward to some quite a lot because it's her doing it. It's her first time doing a big blockbuster like this. Also, you look at the cast, you got the likes of Margaret. Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Simi Lewis, and typing out his name, apologies if it's not, you know, the guy who played Shang-Chi, you've got Will Ferrell, you've got uh, Shooty Gatwa, who's going to be the next Doctor, again, might be, I might be mispronouncing the actor's name, I'm going to apologize if I am, uh, you've got this, this huge cast though, you get America Ferrer, it just goes on and on and on, this huge cast of loads of famous people, and you've got Greta Gerwig directing, you also have Greta Gerwig doing, as a, you know, credits as a co-writer on this film, she co-wrote the film with her husband, who's also a filmmaker, with Noah Bornback, who previously directed White Noise, which I think came out last year. I wasn't a big fan of White Noise, but Greta Gerwig was also in that. She played the mother in White Noise, and I did think she worked rather well in that film when she was playing off against Adam Driver. But yeah, I was a big fan of White Noise, but I enjoyed her in it. But Noah Bornback also directed Marriage Story, which came out in 2019. And I haven't seen that film since I first watched it in 2019, but I remember liking it quite a bit. So you've got Noah Bornback and Greta to go with two, you know, pretty good filmmakers writing the script, writing the screenplay, you've got a great cast, you've got Greta Gerwig directing, you've got this huge production value which you're seeing in the trailers, the trailer of the film looked really good, and, you know, it's one of the most anticipated movies of the year for many people, in fact, I think it was even in my five most anticipated movies of the year when I did that last Christmas, I did my five most anticipated movies of the year, and I think this was number five. I think it was. I can't actually remember now. Uh, but I, the point is, I was very excited for this film. I was very, very excited to see it. And honestly, I'm not going to give a plot synopsis in this one. No, I'm just not doing that. You can go and find a plot synopsis elsewhere. But for me, this movie didn't work. And I admire it. I admire what it's saying. And I agree with many of its themes. I love its commentary on modern day society and how it explores and tackles all these ideas of feminism in today's world. I love how it did all that. I love all the messages of the film and it's a very important movie for today's world. But for me, 
all the messages kind of got muddled up in the film's execution. Like, don't get me wrong, as what he mentioned, this film has this mega production value, which you see in the trailers, and, you know, the Barbie world, which you see in the trailers as well, is very believable. But for me, the film was totally a bit all over the place, and I wasn't... <laughs> I don't think the film really knew what it wanted to be. I don't think the film really knew what it wanted to be because at one point it's a musical, at one point it's a rom-com, at one point it's a film about family, at one point it's a film about sisterhood, and then at another point it's meant to be this flat-out comedy. You've even got Will Ferrell in one of the big roles in the movie. I mean, he's not in the film loads, but he's in an important role in the film. And you have all this going on, and it feels like Greta Gerwig finally got given all this money to do a film. And I'm really happy that she did, by the way. I'm all for female filmmakers work in this industry. I think we should have far more of them. And Greta Gerwig, as she's proven before, is a very, very talented filmmaker. You know, I, I think she's done a superb job with... I think she did a superb job with Lady Bird and Little Women. But with this film, I feel that she got given all this money and she didn't quite know what to do with it. And what she, she went, oh, I want to do a blockbuster, but I want to do a blockbuster based on all the things I've liked in the past, all the things I want to do in a blockbuster. And she tried to do way too much. And really, what I think she should have done is focus on one thing, like just make this into a musical or make this into a comedy or not try and do all these different ideas because there are some really good moments in the film. The musical numbers work quite well. But they felt like they kind of came out of nowhere. They felt like they came out of nowhere. And by the time we got to these musical numbers, I was sat there going, oh, this is a really good and entertaining moment. But why is it so late on in the movie? And why, <laughs> why is the comedy coming at a moment that's just after this really serious scene about America Ferreira's daughter and how she perceives people in how she perceives, how she perceives Barbie in the modern day world. Why are we getting all this comedy, which is feeling a bit jarring because of the way the film is being shot? And I just I don't think that the execution was totally there. It's a well directed movie, but. It's well made, what I'm saying, it's well staged, there's a lot of really good camera movement in the film, and again, the production value, I've gone about the costume design, the sets that you see in the movie, it's great, it's grand, it's brilliant. But, for me, what I mean by the fact that it got muddled in this execution, is that I don't quite know what film it wanted to be. I don't really get what I was watching, and a lot of it as well, felt like an inside joke, which I didn't quite get, because I've never played with Barbie in my life. I've never been really interested in Barbie. In fact, my only exposure to Barbie has been in the Toy Story movies, and I mean, enjoy those movies, but, you know, um, I, I, the point is, I've never... I've never been interested in Barbie in my life, and the chances are, I never will be. And so, there was a lot of inside jokes, at least they felt like inside jokes, to do with Barbie in the Barbie world, which I didn't totally get. And it's meant to be a comedy. There's a lot of this film which is meant to be funny. You've got a lot of famously comedic actors in here, like, as I mentioned, Will Fell, but you also got Kate McKinnon there, who, you know, started off in SNL. You've got all of these famous comedy actors in this movie, and... You know, they're funny at times, but I don't think the film is that funny, though. There's a couple of funny lines, a couple of moments that I giggled in the movie, but I didn't laugh out loud. You know, I I, I, I wasn't dying whilst I was watching the movie as I wanted to be. You know, my favourite comedies are comedies which I, I am literally dying at, and at the same time, though, I'm finding it quite poignant. And there are moments in the film which are poignant, but... I don't think the balance well, I don't think the comedy really works. There's some funny lines and some funny moments. Ryan Gosling is quite funny as Ken. Uh, Michael Cera is quite funny as Just Alan. I mean, I really like Michael Cera ever since I saw him in Arrested Development, which I spoke about a couple of days ago on this channel. But yeah, Michael Cera's in the film, he's really funny. Will Fell has a couple of funny, uh, couple of funny lines. Kate McKinnon is quite funny in some moments, and so is America Ferreira. But, and so is Margot Robbie as well, but you know, you can't expect that because she's the lead role in the movie. So there are some funny moments, but I don't think the film is that funny overall, and yet it's meant to be a comedy, at least I think it's meant to be. And... I also think the film doesn't work as well as it could do because 
it's Greta Gerwig's first blockbuster. And as what he mentioned, I am all for female fe fe female filmmakers working in the blockbuster filmmaking, um, in, in blockbuster filmmaking. But the thing is, I think, I think what happened was Little Women and Lady Bird, her two previous movies, seemed quite low budget. I mean, I don't actually know what the budget's worth those movies, but they seem quite low budget, and yet. I think they're far more moving and nuanced because of that, because you're focusing more on the characters. In this movie, you get distracted by everything else, and it feels at times like it wants to be a popcorn flick, but it also wants to be a Greta Gerwig film. And I'm not saying the two can't. I'm not saying they can't happen. I'm not saying they, you know. They, I'm not saying they can't be the same thing. But in this film, I don't think they really work because. You know, Greta Gerwig's past movies, particularly Lady Bird, which I was really captured by. Yeah, that really got me far more than I expected it to. That's a very nuanced film. And this film feels like, you know, it wants to have fun. It wants to have its cake and eat it. I don't know... Pardon me, I don't know if it's totally doing that. I, I, I feel at times that Greta Gerwig wants to make her movie... But she also wants to make a pop conflict. And I, maybe the whole pop conflict thing, maybe the fact that it still wants to be this, you know, feel good summer blockbuster, it's a studio note from Warner Brothers. I, I, maybe, I, I just don't know because at times this felt like it was verging on Greta Gerwig's previous works, but at the same time it also felt like it wanted to be this big feel good summer blockbuster. And I, I just don't think the two worked in this movie and it's trying to tackle all these serious themes, themes which are important and you know it's trying to uh, present all these messages, messages which I agree with, messages which are important about today's world and about women's place in today's world but it does it in such a way where I'm not sure that the message is a point as I think it could be or as it has been in Greta Gerwig's previous films. I think the whole idea of what it's like to be a woman, or what it's like to, or what it has been like to be a woman in this world is tackled in a far better fashion in Greta Gerwig's previous movies. And, you know, there is still things I liked about the film, though. As I already mentioned, there was a couple of funny moments, and I really enjoyed Michael Cera in the film. Mike Gosling is good, although I will say, I didn't really like Ryan Gosling's Ken. I know a lot of people have been raving about him in the film. Um, it's not that I... It's not that I think Ryan Gosling gives a bad performance. I love Ryan Gosling. I love everything he's in, whether it's La La Land, Nice Guys, Blade Runner 2049, and I can't wait to see what he does next. And he's good in the movie, but... I didn't like his character. I didn't find his character that likable. I honestly preferred Simi Lu's Ken. I don't know how to pronounce her actor's name. It's only played Shang Chi, is what he mentioned. Um, but yeah, I honestly preferred his Ken. <laughs> and they're meant to be rivals in the film, and I was I was sort of rooting for Simi Lu more. Um, I also enjoyed America Ferrera as well, though. I mean, every time I heard, every time America Ferrera spoke in the film. All I was thinking was Astrid in How to Train a Dragon, because that's who she voiced. She voiced the main female character, the lead female character in the How to Train a Dragon movies, which I absolutely adore. I particularly love, love, love the first How to Train a Dragon film. And so every time she spoke, all I was hearing was Astrid from the How to Train a Dragon movies. But she's great. I really enjoyed her. Mal is great, as we expect. You know, she is an Academy Award nominated actress. And... You can really tell, you know, her versatility shines in this film. You know, a part she's meant to be quite funny, but then she's also meant to be quite emotional and quite um, going through some hard stuff. And you really, she, she really shows that in this film. And, you know, you look at her in this movie and then you look at her in I, Tonya, And, you know, she's an incredible actress. She's not just attractive. She's really good as an actress. And, you know, there's a, there's a good reason she's still getting jobs. And she's really good in this film. And... Yeah, I mean, the film's cast is great, and as I mentioned, the production value, and the music, I didn't realise this, but part of the music is by Mark Ronson, who, you know, works, on, works with such famous artists as Amy Winehouse on her version of Valerie, and what's the other name, Bruno Mars on Uptown Funk, you know, I'm not huge on Mark Ronson, but I have enjoyed his music in the past, at least some of his songs that he's worked on, and I didn't know he did the music of the film until I saw it in the opening credits, I was like, oh wow, Mark Ronson, the music in this film works quite well, and is there anything else here, like I said before, you know, the camera movement works quite well, and 
I do feel that a lot of people are going to love this film. I really feel that. I feel that a lot of people are going to come out to me and say this is one of their favourite films of the year. And that's great. It just wasn't my sort of film. I admire it for what it was doing. I really do. And I wish I came out of this movie saying that I absolutely adored it. But I didn't. I was honestly quite disappointed by it. I mean, I didn't hate it. I didn't even really dislike it. You know, disliking this film would involve me getting emotionally invested in it. That's something I never really did. I never really got... I never really felt engaged in the movie. I wasn't engaged in the story or any of the characters or the uh, filmmaking, the visual style. I wasn't really engaged in any of that. You know... <laughs> And I didn't really feel that emotionally invested in the story or any of the characters either. And maybe that's another reason it didn't really work for me. Because I didn't feel that emotionally invested into this movie. I never really got into it. And that's that's another reason it's not really one of my sort of films. Because I wanted to feel so much more engaged in it than I actually did. And I don't know why. But it just didn't work for me. I really wanted it. I mean, I know why it didn't work for me. And the thing is, I love this film exists. I love that it's made so much money. I love that loads of people are going to see it. You know, I went to go and see Oppenheimer the other day, and I'll get around to do my view of Oppenheimer in the next couple of days on this channel, but I went to go see Oppenheimer at the cinema the other day, and there was a queue right next to the cinema for Oppenheimer, which was this huge queue for Barbie, for loads of girls who are going to go into the movie and hopefully find it a very fulfilling experience but you know I, I never really got into it I didn't feel engaged into the story I didn't feel invested into it and I honestly felt that most of the film for me was really unengaging and you know I still can't wait to see what Greta Girl does next I can't wait to see what she does next there's uh, some reports out there that she's going to die at two Narnia movies for Netflix and you know what if she can do fancy well those movies I reckon will turn out absolutely fantastic so I can't wait to see what Greta Gerwig does next and I still really like her as a filmmaker but I feel that she was trying to make about five different movies in this one she was, and the film's under two hours and yet it's doing all this and at times I was like flipping at you this is trying to do so much, and there's some parts of the film which I like, but at the same time I feel jarring, like when Barry and Ken go into the real world. It's a good moment, it's a really good sequence. There's a really good sequence there when they go into the real world, and everybody's looking at them in their costumes, and they're going, well, who the hell are these guys? What, 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 what's their deal? And that's a really good, that's a really good sequence, and I really liked. But then it tries to be funny at the same time. It goes... It feels like it goes from a comedy straight after. I'm like, why? I don't know what film you're trying to make here. And there was also one young character from the this is young girl you me who gives this speech to Barbie about how the Barbie doll has affected girls growing up and whatnot. And it's quite a powerful monologue. It's a really well written monologue. But because it's from this young girl who looks about 15 or 16, I don't know what age she really is, but she looks about 15 or 16 in the movie, I'm sitting there going, yeah, I don't believe you'd say that. I don't believe, I don't believe in any of that coming out of her mouth. I don't believe that she would actually say that. If it was from an older female character, then I'd believe it. But because it was her, I was like, yeah, I don't believe a young girl her age would actually say that. And, you know, the thing is, there is a speech from America Ferrer's character later on in the film about how difficult it is to be a woman. And I believed that speech a lot more. And it was another great moment. But it came after... A moment that involved Rob Brydon. And I really like Rob Brydon, but I don't understand why I was in this film. And it came after all these comedic sequences, which, well, at least were meant to be funny. I didn't really find them funny. I'm like, I, I don't get what this film is going for. Totally, it's all over the place for me. And I, it feels like about five different movies. And it feels as well like it wants to be a Greta Gerwig film with all these poignant messages. And also, a summer blockbuster popcorn flick. Pardon me. And I think those two ideas didn't totally gel in this movie. And so, it's not my soft film, and I've explained why. But I admired it. You know, I admired 
this film, when I look back at it, I admire it. I, when I look back on the film, I'll go, yeah, you know what, I admire it because of all these messages, which I agree with, all of its commentary on modern day society and how we view women. I agree with all that, <laughs> but I, I just thought that it was trying to do too much. And, you know, in the end, maybe I just didn't like this film because I'm not a woman. Maybe that's why. But I really, really want to like it. And I'm a fan of Greta Gerwig, and I can't wait to see what she does next. But for me, this was a bit of a miss from her. But I'm really happy if other people love this movie. And if you saw it and you absolutely adored it, that's great. I, I'm so happy for you. And I can see why a lot of people would love this movie to pieces. But for me... It just wasn't my type of film. That's it. It just wasn't my kind of movie. <sighs> oh well, I can't love everybody. I can't love everything I see. But I admired it for what it was doing. It just wasn't for me. And that's how I feel about Barbie overall. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that Barbie, I'm going to say that it's a 5 out of 10 from me. Honestly, I don't know. <sighs> I don't feel I should give rating on this film because of everything I've just said. I was really deliberating whether I should give a rating to this movie because of my experience with it. I I was sat in the cinema and it was full of people who were not like me. You know what I mean? I was sat in the cinema thinking I was a bit the odd... I, I was kind of the odd one out. And I'm thinking that maybe I shouldn't get... I was thinking before I did this podcast today that I shouldn't give this film away because I don't feel on the target audience for it. So I was deliberating about that bit. But at the same time, though, I feel that a film like this should be universally appealing to everybody, though. And for me, it didn't really. It felt like, as what I mentioned, there was this inside joke going on that I never really got with a lot of the comedy. I mean, I understood the themes, I understood many of the messages, and I really liked his commentary on feminism and women in today's world, as what he mentioned, but I, it, for me, it felt like I never really got into it. And so, yeah, I was really questioning whether to actually give this film a rating or not, and I have given it a rating, but also take my rating with a huge grain of salt that I'm not the target audience, because I'm not the target audience for the film, and... I admire it, but it's just not for me. As one mentioned, that's why I took the film of all. I admire it, and it's just not for me. And I've been rambling way too much about it, so I'm going to round this podcast off by saying once more that the Barbie movie wasn't for me, but I admired it. And for that reason, I'm going to say that it's a 5 out of 10. I'm going to say that Barbie is a 5 out of 10 for me. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's podcast. Sorry if it wasn't the best. My head's all over the place. I had a very busy past couple of days, and I have my views of Oppenheimer and the Bear Season 2 coming sometime late in this week. It just depends when I can actually fit it in my schedule at the moment. But um, thank you so much for watching or listening, if you have watched or listened uh, this far in the podcast. And please let me know your thoughts on Barbie. If you loved it, again, that's great. Really happy for you, and I wish I loved it, um, but I just didn't. But I'd love to hear what other people loved it in the comment section below. And if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like, subscribe on this podcast, and look forward to many more podcasts coming very, very soon on this channel thank you as always for watching and i will also say thank you as always for watching and listening and i will see you guys again soon but bye for now bye